Hey, how you doing out there in YouTube land? This is Stiletto coming at you from the wild, wild west. Hope everybody's doing okay out there. Hope the virus is not affecting everybody's lives too much out there. Hope everybody's doing okay. Hope everybody still has income. Hope everybody's able to take care of their families. Anyway, unboxing time. Unboxing time. And this one is coming from eBay. Open up today is my SR1. SR1. Absolutely love my SR1. Cold Steel SR1 Lite. Oh, I didn't show you guys the box first, huh? Let me show you the box first before I get carried away with myself. Pen. You know, let me get the scale and everything too. Hold on. All right, here we go. Now I'm ready. Sorry about that. Should have this stuff up first. This is live. <laughs> no rehearsals. <laughs> here we go. Now I got everything I want. As you guys saw, this is the linchpin. I've been wanting to get the linchpin for a while now. And a great auction came up on eBay and there's actually two different auctions for two different lynch pins and I won both one I won for 50 bucks and the other one I, this one I won for 81 let's read the specs on it real quick blade length 3.734 inches closed length 5.261 inches Overall length 8.875 inches, blade steel 1.4116 stainless steel, it's the corrupt, German corrupt stainless steel. Blade thickness 0 0.151 inches or 3.84 millimeters. Blade style modified sheep foot. Blade grind flat, I would actually call it a saber grind, a high saber. Blade finish satin. Handle material, glass filled, glass reinforced nylon, GRN. Liner material, stainless steel, locking mechanism, deadbolt, the deadbolt. The pivot assembly, IKBS ball bearing system by Flavio Kuma. Pocket clip, deep carry, tip up, right or left carry. Weight 6.2 ounces. And the designer is Flavio Kuma, and it was made, manufactured in Taiwan. As you guys know, I love Flavio. He's one of my, one of my favorite new designers. Him and Andrew are my two favorites right now. And why? Because I like strong locks. I like designers that can make super strong locks. And Flavio and, and, and Andrew Dimko are the masters of making strong locks. The deadbolt. As, as, as everybody has seen, going to competition, the clever girl against the mighty SR1 Lite. And yes, the SR1 Lite did win, but the clever girl stayed in there all the way up to 580 pounds of, of holding dead weight, which is a massive amount of weight for any folder to hold. That's massive. It's just that the SR1 is just super, 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 super strong. It's hard to be a triad. Lockback knives in general are, tend, tend to have really strong locks. If the lockback was done right where it bites down deep into the blade tang. And with the 
stop pin and and the deep and the deep biting lock back it makes for a super strong triad can't deny it the triad's a bad mother watch your mouth <laughs> but we do have a contender we do have a contender and it's called the deadbolt the Flavio Kuma deadbolt the deadbolt's a bad mother watch your mouth too Bad mother, watch your mouth too. And one thing that the deadbolt does have over the over the triad is that it's easier to use and easier to keep clean. This is a super easy knife to maintain. All you do is just take out this one Torx bit screw right here. I can't remember exactly what it was. I want to say maybe a 10 or so. I'm not exactly sure. I think these are sixes. The body screws, I think, are sixes. I think that's either like a ten or something like that. But anyway, all you do is just take out this one torch screw, and this plate will come up, and there's a spring, there's a, a conical spring underneath here, and it just comes out, and you can push out the deadbolt. That's all there is to it. It's real easy to keep clean, and there's. And like the the seismic, I mean not the seismic, but like the um, the clever girl. This one's not lightened up at all, so you don't have any lightning holes that would collect dust. So this would be a very easy knife to EDC and keep clean every day. Nothing to it. And with these kind of knives, um, CRKT will tell you that they work best when you put lithium grease on the deadbolt. You lube them with lithium grease, like a lithium-based grease. I use Militech 1 lithium-based grease, gun grease. And if I do, do decide to carry one of these, that's what I will do with one of these. Oh, yeah, one of these, huh? One of these. I'm talking like I got two. Well, it's because I did. <laughs> this one got for 50 bucks, 50 bucks. Both of them are brand new. Both of them have never been used or brand new. And these normally go between like $99 and $119. $99 at the Knife Center. And $119 pretty much everywhere else. There's like $119. Bucks. I just take a look at both of them. absolutely love them well that completes my collection of linchpins and these to me feel better in hand than the seismic and the clever girl this one if I was going to use one of these for an everyday knife if it was going to be my only knife I would get uh, out of three of those I would get the linchpin the linchpin just feels better in hand This knife feels really nice in hand. And the blades are beautiful. And the grinds, I'm, I'm looking at the grinds comparing the two different blades. And they're identical. I can't tell the difference. Everything's identical on these two knives. Absolutely beautiful. I know 4116 Krupp German stainless steel isn't everybody's favorite steel, but there are some good things about Krupp stainless steel. Number one, I know there's lots of people that use their pocket knives for culinary uses and stuff like that. Like me, I do that too. When I go to work, I love to chop up sausages or whatever I'm having for lunch or whatever. I use my knife to help prepare it because I like to use my own knife. I know it's clean <laughs> but anyway uh, and this has 4116 416 is a culinary state stainless steel that's often used for culinary like all, all cold steels um, culinary knives that they make kitchen kitchen cutlery is all made out of 41 
4116. So for food, if you're going to use your knife for food prep, this would be a good stainless steel for that. Now that, now that it doesn't rust, it's, it takes a lot to make it rust. So you don't have to worry about your knife rusting if you live in an area where it's like humid. It'd be a good knife for that then too. These are absolutely beautiful. And they're perfectly flawless. The blades, super tight. No wiggle, no wobble, no, no ticks, no nothing. They're super tight. I would put them in the same category as this knife. I think these are all like the same category of knives to me. Let's see what it weighs. Just compare it. I think it said 6.2 ounces. Yeah, 6.2 ounces. Mine weighs 6. Uh, I bumped the table a little bit and went to 6.2. Okay, now it's, it says 6.2. Let's see if the, the other one weighs the same thing. They both weigh 6.2. I knew these knives were identical. As opposed to 6.7. So this they're all way about the same. I would consider all these heavy duty folders. 3.84 millimeter blade stock is a thick blade stock. And this one right here I think is 4.8 millimeter which is even thicker. Like a whole millimeter thicker. But these are really nice heavy duty folders. This one would, this one I'm sure would slice better. I think it would slice better than this one. All of these have the polymer handles. All of them have stainless steel blades and the, and the, and the, and the blades aren't made out of premium stainless steels. One of the big things that you're getting with these knives are the locking systems. That's what makes these knives worth what they're worth to me. And out of these I think the best deal I think you've heard me say it before, but I think the best deal is the Cold Steel SR1. You can get these for $59.49. Whereas these normally go for, like I said, between $99 and $119. They're all made in Taiwan. And they're made by American companies. Columbia River Knife, Knife and Tool and Cold Steel Incorporated. Which is now Cold Steel or GSM Cold Steel, but this is part of the, the old company, Cold Steel Incorporated. I don't have any of the new GSM knives. This is the best deal. And you can get this in a clip point blade too if you need a more of a, a blade like this with more of a belly to it, like if you're using it for a hunting knife or outdoorsman's knife like fishing or whatever. It would be better to have a belly to it. This is more like a self-defense knife or a survival knife. <clears throat> where you just want the hit most heaviest duty type blade that you can get, which is, in my opinion, the Cold Steel's American Tonto, especially when it has a flat grind like this one. Flat grind on the on the the cutting edge and then the chisel tip on your on your point, which makes it a super strong point blade point. But this looks super strong too. This tip's reinforced also. Both beautiful knives. Well, that's about all I got. That's about all I got on these. Oh, yeah, let's, let's, let's do our overall length and make sure that it's like... Oh, yeah, it's just under nine inches. This one's almost nine and a half inches. Okay. And the blade on these. Let me see how much cutting edge we got. Three and a half inches of cutting edge on that one. I'm gonna measure not from the the point, but from right here, that where the where the, where the grind's flat, and you got like a, a, a continuous cutting edge. Then you got three inches. 
So this one's got three and a half inches of cutting edge, continuous cutting edge, and this one's got three inches. And then if you include the tip, you got three and three quarters of cutting edge. So these both are pretty much, they're very close. Even though this is a little bit smaller knife, it still can do probably everything that this one can do. This one would probably be a little bit easier to carry because it's not as bulky. The SR1 is more of a squared off knife and it's more bulkier. It would be okay within jeans and stuff like that. Same thing with this one. This is like a jeans knife too. You're not going to want to wear slacks and carry that. But uh, this one's going to imprint a little bit more because it's bulkier. But that also makes it nice though because of the girth of the handle is nice. This one feels really nice in hand too though. But it's, it's not as thick as, it's not as wide as this one. I don't know, maybe it is though. I don't, let me see. Let's measure that. Well, they're about the same. I take it back. The CRKT is just a little bit, like a sixteenth of an inch narrower than, than the other one. They're both going on like three quarters of an inch for thickness. Nine sixteenths. Is that what that is? This one. This one's eight sixteenths. Just a little bit different. A little bit different. But that's all right. That's about it. That's about all I got for you guys today. I hope everybody's doing okay. Hope everybody's doing okay. It's good that people are getting vaccinated. I hear they got 38 pe million people vaccinated now. Keep it going, keep it going. Let's get everybody vaccinated so we stop wearing masks and have regular sports and we can hang out together and go to clubs and bars and public events where large gatherings and music concerts and shows and outdoor stuff like fishing and camping let's, let's, let's get let's get this thing conquered let's get it conquered we need to get it conquered I don't know you about you but I'm tired tired of COVID it's time for COVID to go <laughs> it's time for us to kick COVID's butt and kick him on out the door <laughs> but anyway hope everybody's doing okay out there peace stiletto stay safe